And so, my friends, turn to Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's right. He's our Lord. Whether you bent your knee to Him or whether you deny Him, it doesn't change the reality. He is our Lord. He is our Creator. He is our Master. He is our Judge. And if we'll repent and turn to Him, He will be our Savior. And so, my friends, turn to the Savior. Turn to Christ the Lord. Turn to Christ and find life and life more abundantly. Turn to Christ and find forgiveness and mercy. Because the reality is we all, we all will receive Christ. He is our Lord. It's just a matter of whether He'll be our Lord and Judge or our Lord and Savior. And we must do what the Bible says, what Jesus in fact said in Mark chapter 1 verse 15. Repent and believe the Gospel. When we see our sin as God sees it, our lust, our lies, our hate, and we turn from it, confessing Jesus Christ as Lord, and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, Romans 10, 9, it says we shall be saved. That's the good news of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. My friends, turn to Christ and find life and find mercy and find forgiveness, and Jesus will be your Savior. But if we give Jesus the stiff arm, we give Him the hand, or as the gentleman over there has been doing, we give Him that one finger wave. My friends, the Lord Jesus will still be your Lord, for He is your Creator, He is your God, and you will stand before Him and give an account that day you breathe your last breath, that day your heart beats its last beat. That's an inescapable reality. But then He'll be your Lord and He'll be your judge forevermore. And He'll say, go from me, you who practice lawlessness. And He'll cast you out into a place with His weeping and gnashing of teeth. In fact, in Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, it warns that the devil was cast, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And there he will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And we all say amen. That's good. The devil should go to hell. But in verse 15 of Revelation 20, it says, And all those whose names were not written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. That same place where the devil will abide forever under literal conscious torment is the place that all sinners whose names are not written in the book of life will abide forever. Amen. And so my friends, turn to Jesus Christ. Confess Him as your Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, Romans 10, 9, and you shall be saved. Jesus shall become your Savior. He is already your Lord. He is the Lord of every man. He is the Lord of everything. He is the Lord of the cosmos because He's the Creator of it all. As in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through Him. Jesus, the Word, made all things. And in John 1, 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory as of that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, my friends, behold the glory of the Lamb. Behold the glory of the Word, Jesus Christ who became flesh in order that his flesh might be pierced, who became flesh in order that he might be crushed, not for his sins, for he had no sin, he is the sinless Lamb of God, the perfect spotless Son of God, the Holy One incarnate, who came to die for sinners. He came to lay down his holy life to take upon Himself our sin and the wrath of God do upon our sin. And that's what He did at the cross. And just before His death, it's recorded in John 19, God bless you, sir, verse 30, it says this, It is finished. Those are the final glorious words of Jesus Christ. It is finished. He finished the payment for sin. He bowed His head he gave up his spirit. He was taken down from the cross and laid in a tomb. And my friends, the tomb could not hold him. Death could not hold him. On the third day, he rose again, conquering sin and death.
And now, even now, he sits at the right hand of the Father as the one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. My friends, it's this Jesus you must receive. This Jesus who is fully God and fully man, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified for sinners, and raised again on the third day, conquering sin and Satan and death. It is this Jesus alone that will save. The Jesus of Mormonism will not save you. The Jesus who is the brother of Lucifer cannot save you. That Jesus does not exist. That's the Jesus of Mormonism. The Jesus of the Watchtower Society, the Jehovah's Witnesses, cannot save you. That Jesus does not exist. For they believe Jesus is the brother, or excuse me, is Michael the Archangel. And friends, Jesus is the eternal Son of God who became flesh. He is no angel. He is the creator of all angels. The Jesus of Catholicism cannot save you. They literally believe that the wafer is Jesus Christ. That when the priest prays over the wafer, the miracle of transubstantiation takes place. And that is literally the body of Jesus to be eaten for justification. That Jesus cannot save you, my friends. That is a false Jesus. The Jesus of Islam cannot save you. A Jesus who is only a prophet and not God, who did not die and did not rise again conquering sin and death, cannot save you. My friends, only the one true Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified for sinners and resurrected on the third day, sitting at the right hand of the Father even now, is the one mediator between God and men. Only that Jesus saves, for only that Jesus is real. The Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus who said, I am the way and the truth and the life and that no man comes to the Father but by me. He alone is the Savior. As in Acts chapter 4 verse 12, it says, nor is there salvation in any other. But there's no other name, not the name of Shiva, not the name of Buddha, not the name of Krishna, not the name of Allah. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus, my friends. The sweet and glorious name of the Son of God, the only Savior. As it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God has demonstrated His love unto us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the amazing grace, the amazing love of God to sinners. We have all sinned, says Romans 3.23, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've lied, we've lusted, we've hated. We've fornicated, committed adultery, stolen, blasphemed God's name, using it as a filth word from our unholy mouths. And yet God has made a way of escape. While well, Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, meaning death eternal under the wrath of God in a very real place called hell. Because God is a just judge, He is angry with the wicked every day. Well, that is true, and God will judge sinners. God is also merciful and gracious and kind. And He is pleased to rescue, pleased to rescue sinners. As we turn from sin, repent. As we turn from sin and confess Jesus Christ as Lord. As Romans 10, 9 says, as Romans 10, 9 says, he who confesses Jesus Christ as Lord and believes in their heart that God has raised him from the dead, they shall be saved. They shall be saved from the wrath to come. They shall be saved to the uttermost. They shall be forgiven of their sins, their sins removed as far as the east is from the west. Their sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. My friends, turn to Jesus Christ and find life. God bless you. God bless you. Have a good day. Turn to Jesus Christ to find life and life more abundantly. Turn to Jesus Christ to find hope for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Turn to Jesus Christ and find forgiveness now and forevermore.